All right, good day, church. It's time for another Wednesday Wi-Fi. How is your divine connection? And if you remember uh, from last week, we have begun to break down Ephesians chapter 6. This was one of four prison epistles written by the Apostle Paul. And in this particular section of the prison epistle in Ephesians, um, he's likening uh, the comparison to a soldier. He's talking about the armor of God. He's talking about a soldier that's prepared for battle. And more than a natural soldier, I'd like to think of you and I as supernatural soldiers equipped with supernatural army against uh, an equipment against a supernatural enemy uh, that is coming against us. And so he breaks it down and he begins in verse 10 to be strong in the Lord and the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against rulers and authorities, against cosmic powers over this present darkness, against spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. And then he says, because of that, because we're not just in the physical realm, but there is a spiritual realm. He says, therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you might be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand firm, stand therefore, having fastened, first of all, the belt of truth. We talked about that last week, how we apply the word of God to our lives. We read the word of God. We study the word of God. We meditate the word of God. The truth that you're going to find in this world full of half-truths and lies, the only absolute truth you're going to find is in the word of God. And then he continues with putting on the breastplate of righteousness. Now, as you can imagine, a breastplate of righteousness is going to cover all your vital organs. It's a, a breastplate that goes over your heart, over your lungs, over those areas that are vital organs. Now, we're going to talk about the shield pretty soon, but the breastplate covers uh, those unexpected attacks or things that might slip past your shield. And then you've got the breastplate to protect you. Now, Jesus said in Matthew 6 33 to seek first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. What does that mean to apply the breastplate of righteousness? That means every single day when you get up, you pray a simple prayer of acknowledgement and thankfulness and gratitude that it was never your righteousness that got you where you are today. In fact, in the book of Isaiah, he says, our righteousness is like filthy rags. It was never our righteousness. It was never our works. But you apply the breastplate of righteousness by thanking God for his grace, by thanking Jesus for the sacrifice on the cross of Calvary that took away your sin, that cleansed you, that made you right before God, that gave you right standing and justified you in his sight. That means that it was just as though you never sinned. And now when God looks at you because you have applied the breastplate of righteousness, the enemy cannot point his accusations or wicked finger at you because God doesn't see you or your sin or your failure any longer. He sees the righteousness of Christ. Thanks be to God. But I want to plant and finish uh, on one particular spot when it comes to the breastplate of righteousness, since we're talking about guarding the heart, because in Proverbs 4.23, it says to guard your heart above all else, guard your heart for out of it flows the issues of life. And we know that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so my challenge to you today in this Wednesday Wi-Fi in having the breastplate of righteousness is to watch what comes out of your mouth. Because guarding your heart and understanding that that breastplate is covering your heart, what you speak is a reflection. It's an amplifier. Just like on Sundays when they plug in and they play guitar, they play their instruments, and it just amplifies what's already coming through the system. That's what your mouth is. It's the amplifier to what's going on in your heart. And so watch what you speak today. Watch what you speak this week. Let life come out of your mouth. Don't speak death, church. Speak life over things going on around you and understand that the words that you speak are a reflection of what's going on in your heart. Continue to wear that breastplate of righteousness by acknowledging and thanking God for his righteousness in you. Here's the sermon in 60 seconds from last week. We talked about a, a few things that we had overlooked in chapter 11. But chapter 12, you know, it's something that could often be overlooked. But this is what I want to give you in the 60 seconds that I have, or less than that now. They recounted the victories in chapter 12. And I want to challenge you to give yourself a little bit of credit in Christ. 
Give yourself some credit that God is actually working and doing things in your life. It wasn't the time to recount failure and losses and mistakes and shortcomings in chapter 12. It was a time to celebrate the wins. And so today and the days ahead leading to this Sunday when we'll be together again, I pray that you will celebrate the wins. You'll celebrate the victories that you've had in Christ. All that God has been doing in the last year, the last month, the last week, even today celebrate the victories in Christ. I love you, church. God bless you. I'll see you this Sunday. Happy Wi-Fi.